Okay, good afternoon YouTube and welcome back to Fat Cat Collections. This is probably going to be a much shorter video and what I want to do is just discuss another topic and what some people, some folks say um, rationalizes a watch's, um, I guess, price point or quality. And um, some folks will say that um, the accuracy of a watch is very, very important and that warrants a much, much higher price. And I just want to show you guys that, now again, this is not the traditional way you would test uh, accuracy of a movement, okay? Uh, now I have two automatic move watches here. One is a Seiko NH35, one is an ETA, uh, I believe it's the, let's see here. Let me go over here, give me one second, my, my battery is going a little low in my mouse. It's an ETA 2836, okay? Now, two different movements. Um, both have about 25 joules, 24 joules. Both these watches here, when I go ahead and just test them side by side, start them exactly the same time, start the second hand, you know, I, I ran it for one minute. And in one minute's time, both are stop exactly at the same point. There's no seconds gained or lost. Now, as time goes on, there will be a difference as far as uh, the accuracy of that movement. And let me just go over here to the, let's see here. ETA 2836, no, not that, let's see here, ETA 2836 accuracy. So, okay, so when we look at these here, and we're on, you know, and there's tons of information on the internet, you guys can look this stuff up yourself and see. Um, they say that some people have said that uh, that this particular movement is been pretty consistent, twelve plus twelve seconds per day. So you know, at the end of the day, that's you know you're gonna you're gonna rate a movement based on how many seconds it's loses or gained. But here's the thing with that: if a watch necessarily loses or gains seconds, is that really? I mean, let's face it: if if you unless you wear your watch nonstop every single day. Never take it off, or if you take it off, you're, you stay within your power reserve of that watch. The watch, you're going to have to reset it, okay? And a lot of these watches have like a 40-hour power reserve. I mean, it, it's different across the movements, okay? But for me, for me personally, okay, and I can only speak on what I do, you know, I'll basically pull the crown on my quartz watches because a lot of the Ronda movements have a 70% power savings mode, uh, that allows you to you know, conserve the battery. And I don't know about you guys, but I want to conserve a battery as long as I possibly can. So every day that I wear a new watch, I reset the time, okay? Uh, my automatic ones, I generally keep the crown screwed down because, um, you know, there's really no point in pulling the crown. It's just, you know, there's no reason to do that on an automatic watch. Now, with the automatic watches, because I have so many in my collection, they sit in my safe and I don't wear them. And so after a period of about 40 to 48 hours, they're dead, okay? They've ran out of power, there's no more power reserve, and next time I put them on, I have to wear them, they start to wind, and I have to reset the time. So that right there to me is just not, doesn't really make any sense as far as an indication or a rationale for spending a lot of money on a specific watch. There are watches out there that are, you know, Casio digital watches that will tell time better than any of your automatic watches. Now, I know that, you know, there are traditionalists and, and that's okay to be that if you have the real appreciation uh, for what goes into making a movement and that's kind of the reasoning behind the watch, then man, man that's awesome. I mean, that's great. Me personally, I don't really share that uh, level of, I guess, uh, or I shouldn't even say level because it really doesn't have anything to do with level just because somebody may be a, a watch I guess a purist where they, they really are concerned with that movement. Maybe they maybe they are a watch builder, they've been in that industry before, they have an appreciation uh, for what goes into that uh, to make it accurate. That's great and more power to you. But for me, I like watches because I like to wear watches. I like to wear a watch and I like to have a good quality or a nice quality watch on my wrist. Uh, mainly it's about accessorizing for me. Um, I'm not really, if I was really into buying a watch for the sheer purpose of being accurate, I wouldn't buy any automatic watch. I'd buy a digital watch. I mean, that, I mean, if we're, if we're being realistic here and accuracy is your real main thing, 
then you would buy a digital watch because there's no automatic or even quartz watch uh, that's going to be as accurate as a digital watch, okay? Uh, now, I'm sure there are watches, and before you jump down my throat, I'm sure there are watches out there for you purists that probably maybe are as accurate. But how much are you going to spend for that watch? My, my point is, is I'm touching on watch quality. And let's face it, all the watches I've been showing you, whether it's the Invicta watch, the Grand Ars or I'm sorry, the Sea Hunter 3, your Aragon watch, okay, your Silver Jet, your Alexander Olin, your Delta T watch, your Aqua Dive watch, your $63 Invicta watch, or your $150 Grand Diver watch, they all tell time and they all gain or lose minutes. And this price range from $63 all the way up to $2,500, they will all gain or lose minutes at some point, or seconds, at some point, sorry, seconds. Now, I get it if you're wearing a watch and you want it to be somewhat accurate. You know, if I have a watch on my wrist and next thing I know I go to check the time and I set it at noon and I check the time and it's supposed to be four o'clock and it's off by half an hour, yes. Or off by 10 minutes, yes, that's unacceptable, okay? But none of these watches do that. None of them, okay? And so, unless the battery fails, okay? That's, I mean, that's just common sense. I remember one guy, he left a comment, I don't, Victor sucks because, you know, the battery failed. Really? So, you know, these are kind of things that I just want you guys to kind of think about uh, when you're considering making a watch purchase. It doesn't matter whether it's the Alexander watch, the Aragon, the Aqua Dive, uh, the Delta T. What matters is the fact that you like it. And I can assure you that whether you choose an Invicta watch or the Aragon, the Alexander, as long as you, as long as you, you know, feel happy wearing that watch and it brings you some sort of enjoyment, that's what's important. And under no circumstances, under no means, should you ever go and put on a $2,500 Alexander watch or a $1,900 Invicta watch, or I'm sorry, an Aqua Dive watch, and then get on YouTube and troll other folks who don't wear watches that cost as much because you're not wearing a watch that destroys their watch in quality. You're not. Now, there are some watches out there that are poor quality. There are watches you can go into Walmart, you can go pick up for 20 to 50 bucks. Um, like I said, this one here is one of your cheapest Invictives that they make. Uh, it's, you know, $63. You can buy this brand new for. It's a quartz, uh, but it's stainless steel. It's got a screw down case back. It's got a stainless steel band with a push button deployment. The quality of the material is decent. It's fold over links, but you know, what do you want for $63? I mean, yeah, if you compare it, you know, to your Alexander or some of the other ones I showed you, even your $150 Invicta Grand Diver, yes, there is a difference. And, and you will pick these two up and you will say, yeah, absolutely. You know, I can feel of these two. This is noticeable. It's noticeable between these two, which one is the better quality watch. You can feel it. Very easy. Anybody and their brother would pick these two up and say, oh yeah, this one is the better quality watch. But, if you didn't know anything about watches, but if you didn't know anything about watches and you went ahead and picked up your Grand Diver and your $25 Alexander watch and felt the two of these side by side, um, you're going to be hard pressed to say which one is actually better. They both feel like nice watches. Now, again, the Alexander watch, Value 7750, it's a known movement, much more, I mean, it's it's what they say would be a better movement. It's a trusted movement, time tested uh, in a lot of higher end watches, but that's the point right there, higher end. They put it in a lot of higher end watches, okay? The movement on this alone, if you were to buy it on eBay, is about $400, okay, just for the movement. So yeah, it is more expensive than your you know, Invicta uh, Seiko NH35. But remember, this one here has got a lot more going on with it. This one here is a chronograph. And you're going to pay more for a chronographed automatic movement. You always will, no matter what brand it is. You can just move in some of the Invicta watches as well. You pay a lot more for them because it is technically what they would consider a better movement. But what does that mean to the consumer? What does that mean to you? And does it mean it's going to last longer? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Do you think that you're going to get this movement that's because it's, you know, 
uh, 400 bucks and the NH35 maybe only, I don't know what they go for, but a lot less. Under no circumstances can you make the, the general statement that this watch is gonna last longer because of that. False. You have good luck and bad luck with anything. And for the price of servicing one Rolex, you can buy one of these. So um, again, I just want you know you guys when you you know because I get a couple people who are like, oh man, you know I, my buddy told me Invicta sucks. They had one that failed. When they say they had one that failed, I'm not saying you can't have good and bad luck with anything. That can be said about anything out there. But most of the time, when you hear bad stories about Invicta, they're talking about this one of these, this price point, sixty-three dollars. This is when they say, oh yeah, I don't like the quality. Yeah, but this is a sixty-five dollar watch. Go see what sixty-five dollars gets you in a store. You, not much. So, all right, guys, watch well, just my quick video on, um, you know, movement quality versus price versus what it actually means for you. Again, if you're a purist and that's your, you are uh, very knowledgeable about movements and what makes them work, and you're, you know, and that's then you what you really are is a is a not really a watch. Um, collector, or you're really a movement collector. You're mainly buying that watch based on that movement, not based on anything else. And there's nothing wrong with that. But again, don't be snobbish about it. Don't be a troll about it. Don't come around making comments because all these brands are very, very nice. And if and I wear them all and I like them equally. But you know, I have my personal preferences, which I more gravitate more towards because it's just more the style that I like. Again, each one of these watches is very nice, and none of the different th differences I showed you as far as the movement really means much at the end of the day because they all tell time. Yeah, maybe one's a little more accurate than another, possibly, but again, that's not an indication of quality. That's an indication of, you know, accuracy. All right, guys, well, thank you for watching the video. I'm sure we get lots of comments on this stuff, so uh, I love the discussion going. Keep it nice. Keep it respectful, and I'll do the same. All right, folks, thanks again for watching. Remember to subscribe to the channel, and have a wonderful day, guys. Take care.